Good afternoon. My name is Joseph Lloyd and I am a huge fan of cars used in old British TV series filmed between the late 1950s and late 1990s. Join me on a journey as we look back on over 40 years of British television and its relationship with the automobile. I made a selection of videos last year talking about a lot of these series and I'm doing it again to make them even better. It's time, viewers, to talk about one of the worst television series ever made. You've seen it in the title sequence. Some of you knew this was coming. It's The Adventurer. I really didn't want to have to talk about this. Please don't buy the DVD. Please don't look it up on the internet. Just don't bother. Well, since we're here, we're going to have to say it, so let's get on with it then. The adventure was made between 1972 and 1973 and broadcast uh, at the same time. I think filming started about March or April 72. It was made on 16mm film and the episode lost 25 minutes, much like uh, The Protectors. But unlike The Protectors, it was... Produced by Monty Berman and scripted vision was by David Spooner. The last um, outing for this partnership, it only lasted 26 episodes and they are not very good. They didn't even bother on the DVD actually restoring the episodes properly. So all the, the footage and um, the pictures you'll see for the adventurer with the exception of a title sequence because that was made on a 35 millimeter film will look washed out and terrible and they won't bother restoring it because the market for this series is frankly tiny just composed myself for a minute there right the adventurer starred uh gene barry as the imaginatively named um, government secret agent Gene Bradley, I know, wonderful, isn't it? Um, who was working for a gentleman by the name of Mr. Parmenter, played by Barry Morse of um, The Fugitive, the same chap, British actor, but for a long time worked in Canada and America. Very nice, actually. There's a very good interview with him on the Eventra DVD box set. Not that you should actually buy that, of course. I'm sure we understand each other in that respect. Anyway, um, made by ITC, of course, and um, produced at Elstree Studios. There was a lot of location filming, but a lot of it's really bad. It doesn't really add an awful lot to it. The program sponsor was actually Chevrolet, and there's a lot of Chevrolet and General Motors cars in the Eventra. I'm not going to talk about all of them. I'll talk about some of them. The premise behind the adventurer is that um, Gene Barry, Gene Bradley, same thing, is a government agent um, who works as a film star, but he's undercover, so they don't know he's a government agent, but also he's a businessman. So he's a film star and a businessman and a government agent all at once. Is there anything he can't possibly do? He's also very short and very old, and anybody who was taller than him, like Stuart Damon, who you'll see in some of the, the images that I'll be showing you, was booted out of a production because he didn't like them. He was probably five foot five or six or something. He also wanted to boot out Catherine Shell, who was one of the other co-stars, um, plays a part called uh, Diane. But uh, she initially was removed because he complained about her being too tall. And um, then they had to bring her back because he went off on a half for a while and they wanted to make some episodes. So they brought her back with the wonderful um, Barry Morse. And Barry Morse was one of the only people who could get on with Gene Barry, actually. So he directed an episode called Action, which is quite good. We'll talk about some of the cars in Action a bit later on. Um, 
on an episode called um, I'll Get There Sometime when he doesn't really appear um, in the episode because he was on holiday. And that's one of the better episodes of The Adventurer. There are some truly terrible ones. The first one made called The Good Book is just unwatchable. It's terrible. Um, there's another one called The Case of the Poison Porn where Gene Barry learns how to play chess with Dennis Price. It's not very good. Um, the worst one of all, though, is I think what icons are forever, which is just terrible. Um, it it really is just Gene Barry trying to enter a, a house, which is supposed to be some kind of Italian castle, but is really in Stanmore, and um, Stanmore of it being in North London. And it's dark and it's terrible. And anyway, let's 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 finish this um, expose of the adventurer and get on to talk about some of the cars in it, shall we? The Adventure has actually got some nice cars in it. You would have seen some photographs uh, just there. Um, in the episode Poor Little Rich Girl, uh, Gene Barry himself drives a 1972 Alfa Romeo Spider 600 Junior. That's very nice, bright red. Um, in um, Double Exposure, I'll get there some time, a Poor Little Rich Girl, amongst other episodes, there's a 1972 Chevrolet Camaro Rally Sport, which is driven by um, Catherine Shell. It's very nice. It's a nice car for a lady. The main car, actually, in the Adventurer is a 1972 Chevrolet Corvette 454 Stingray. It's the C3 Corvette, um, which is NLL212K. That car's still around, actually. It's still going. Supplied by Chevrolet themselves and used mainly, uh, actually, in this country um, in a number of episodes. Funnily enough, um, it's left-hand drive because... That's always available, uh, you know, to people in this country who wanted to buy a Corvette in 1972. Um, but nevertheless, it's nice to see it. It very much fits the character of Gene, of Gene Bradley, uh, who is the character name, not Gene Barry, the actual actor. In Miss Me Once, Miss Me Twice, Miss Me Again, um, Gene Barry and Ed Bishop um, use a 1966 Citroen DS-19 for 19. Um, and... Um, one of the things that actually I like about The Adventurer is in Double Exposure, there is a chase between Donald Houston, who is playing the double of a character called uh, Jan de Groot, and Gene Barry, who is playing the double of Gene Bradley. And it makes absolutely no sense. But anyway, he's driving a 1971 Opel Manta Ray, in Amsterdam, and as you can see, he jumps one of the bridges, and it's quite exciting, really. Donald Houston himself who is playing the double of Jan de Groot in Double Exposure, drives a 1971 Opel Record Sprint Coupe. It's a Record C. It's not... I thought this was a Commodore for many years, but it's not. It's a Sprint Coupe. Um, it's a Record C, not a Record D. Record D does appear in some episodes, but that's a bit later. In Return to Sender, there's a 1965 MGB. In Full Fathom 5, there's a 1960 Cadillac Funeral Coach by, uh, by Miller Meteor. Um, that's a very similar one to um, the Ghostbusters Cadillac, but not exactly the same. There's another Chevrolet Camaro SS, a red one, um, and that appears in The Good Book, um, Return to Sender, and several other episodes. That's uh, driven by Gene Bradley, mainly. Um Stuart Damon, in The Good Book, when he's not been thrown out of the series for being too tall, um, drives a 1968 Citroen ID-19. Um, don't watch The Good Book, it's terrible. Um, in The Bradley Way, there are three 1968 Citroen ID-19 ambulances. And uh, the sequence in that, that's like a chase, has um, got some excellent music in it by um, the composer Paul Clay.
Another car from Return to Sender is a 1963 Fiat 2300. Um, then in the cupboard, there's a um, Oldsmobile 98 from 1969 with a roof rack on it. I wonder why that roof rack's there. It's so the stuntman can hang on to it, I would imagine. In Poor Little Rich Girl, there's a 1964 Opel Capitaine A, uh, part of the so-called KAD um, sort of triumvirate of cars that um, Opel making up time. There are a couple of Opel Record Ds in the episodes um, set up. I think in Belgium, both of those. There's a yellow one and a green one. Um, those are mainly used when Gene uh, Barry's not around by um, Mr. Parmenter, uh, Diane, and a chap called um, Gavin, who's played by Garrick Hagen. Um, in Return to Sender as well, um, Pamela Salem, who is Miss Money Penny from Memphis and Ever Again, uh, she escapes from a crash in a 1960 Peugeot 403 Familiar. Uh, that crash takes place in the wonderful Elstree Studios backlot town. Finishing up now because I don't want to spend any more time talking about the adventure of a necessary ready. Um, in the episode to the lowest bidder, which uh, features uh, who uh, is now a, a famous uh, cake maker, Jane Asher, uh, before she made cakes and um, was involved with uh, um, rock musicians. Um, she uh, was also an actress and um, she appears in an episode called To the Lowest Bidder with a 1972 Vauxhall Ventura FE um, MXD 405K that was supplied by Vauxhall. In the episode Action, there's a very similar looking car, MXD 415K. It's a 72 Vauxhall Victor Estate, uh, it's 2200 SL. The Transcontinental Victors and Venturas weren't that interesting really, um, but you know, they're around, so I, I suppose I better talk about them. Then um, another car in double exposure it was a 1972 Opel Escona A. That actually damaged it, it was a brand new car, and they slammed it into a, into a lamppost. I presume um, Opel weren't too bothered about that. Another a uh, press car from Vauxhall in the case of the poison porn. So there we are, viewers. We made it through the Cars of the Adventurer. Um, as I said, don't bother getting the box set. Don't bother looking this series up on the internet. Just enjoy um, Gene Barry looking a bit wrinkled and sort of laugh at him. And that's all really I can say. That's about the maximum amount of pleasure you'll get out of it, apart from that car chase in Amsterdam. Thank you very much indeed for watching this uh, installment of Cars on Television. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment below. We will we'll be talking about a better series next time. Um, don't forget to visit my Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Lloyd at Vehicle Consulting. Thank you ever so much indeed for watching.